This is uh, Eric Olson from Helps Nonprofit Law Firm. Um, Thursday, October 27th, I'd like to welcome you to Helps YouTube Live. And um, if you haven't been here before, my name's Eric Olson. I'm the executive director. I'm an attorney what, for 42 years um, of Helps, and that stands for Help Eliminate Legal Problems for Seniors. We're a 501c charitable organization, actually a law firm. And what we do is we represent seniors who have debt they can't afford to pay uh, in order to stop debt collector harassment under a federal law called the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. If your person's represented by an attorney, debt collectors can no longer call or send letters to that person anymore. They have to leave them alone. Can't communicate with them. And so when people enroll in helps, they give us the creditors they owe money to, we send a cease and desist letter and peace returns to the senior's life. And then we educate seniors about their financial rights and primarily the fact that their social security and their pension, their disability, their VA benefits is protected by federal law, okay? And some of the things we talk about, you know, um, on this YouTube Live, you know, uh, uh, a lot of these topics are covered in our, uh, our YouTube page. Sometimes I may talk about the same thing because we get the same questions, um, but I always try to get something new. And and we have a chat feature, uh, and if you got questions, uh, check on the chat, or or you can ask your question on the chat, and I'll look at it, and I'll try to answer your question. Um, the question that. Uh, I got asked yesterday, and it comes up occasionally. Someone want to know is my IRA protected? Um, and IRAs are protected under state laws. Okay, there's federal laws that protect certain types of retirement income, primarily uh, a pension, uh, and of course Social Security, and federal uh, VA benefits. Now, disability income is protected under various state laws, and almost all states protect your disability income. They don't want people to be on disability and all of a sudden credit be able to get the money. The reason you get disability is to be able to help you while you're disabled. So states protect that. Federal government doesn't. There might be a few laws that protect certain types of federal disability, but, uh, but it's primarily under state law. So IRA stands for Independent Retirement Account, okay? Uh, Pensions are protected under a federal law called ERISA, uh, which is the Employment Retirement Income Security Act, 1974. And so that's been in effect for almost 50 years, and almost all pensions are covered under ERISA. Now, if they're not, there's probably, a, which would be very few, there's probably a state law that protects it. Uh, I. I can't ever recall in my entire practice a creditor being able to garnish any type of pension. It, it, it wouldn't happen. It doesn't happen. Um, so what about an independent retirement account? Well, that's covered under state law. And almost all states protect IRAs. Now, a few states have an exception, and it says, to the extent necessary to support the debtor. Okay, so someone asked me about that yesterday. One of my staff said, the person want to know about IRA, Eric, and uh, I think I have a, I mean, I've had an email that talks about that, but I prepared one anyway. Maybe I didn't find one. And we have a link to all the states and how IRAs are protected. But um, when it says, to the extent necessarily support the debtor, that covers virtually everyone. Especially, you know, we got inflation. I mean, the, the reason they may have put that in there in different states is maybe they had someone that had an IRA with millions and millions of dollars in it, and they say, well, gee, this guy doesn't need this much. He did that just to avoid paying his creditors. That would never happen to any of our clients. So, no, your IRA is protected. No one's going to be able to get at it. Um, what happens if you put the money in your bank account? Well, the, one of our major things we tell people and, and try to educate them on is that twice the amount of your federal benefit you receive, Social Security, deposit into a bank account, 
is automatically protected from garnishment, regardless of what funds are in there where they came from. Now, you don't even have to worry about a garnishment unless someone were to sue you and get a judgment, and then they'd have to know where you bank. So the odds of those things happening are pretty remote. But then, if you're worried about that, uh, then as long as you keep twice the amount of your Social Security in there, less than that, if someone were to garnish your account, they would get nothing, okay? Uh, and if you're, you could had excess, you could pull the money out, put it on a preloaded debit card, under the mattress, you know, some cashier's checks, no one could be able to garnish those. So, no, you don't need to worry about losing your money. Um, and I don't see any comments. Is someone out there? Second here. Okay, um, I apologize, I'm gonna check my tech guy. Yeah, yeah, we're here. Please leave a message. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm 71, I'll be 72 in February, and uh, so I was, raised before computers okay uh, although i really love computers and i can type really good and i encourage and we're really tech savvy but personally i struggle and that's why i've got a lot of people that help me um so uh, I'll, we got a question here I'll, I'll answer that i got a bunch of stuff to talk about today can a collection agency that gets a judgment take an rv or a tv in montana the judgment would be against me only and my wife's name is on everything no, won't do it. Won't do it. Uh, even if it was in your name alone, it 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 just wouldn't happen. It's kind of like, uh, you know, there's always possibilities things could happen. Like, you could drive to the convenience store. Sometimes they say tonight at ten o'clock, and you could get hit by a drunk driver, but. Do you live your life that way? No. Is it possible? I guess it is possible. But if it did, if you did, got hit by a drunk, we know what to. You know what to do. Okay. Uh, but the odds of that happening are so remote, and I, it just won't happen. So, no, I've never seen a, a judgment creditor for a collection agency like that ever try to take anyone's car or RV. Uh, but if it's in someone else's name, no, it just won't happen. So you know, you don't need to worry about that. Okay. Um, so that that's the deal on, on IRAs. Um, I saw a little email just before I started this. Someone wrote in, and I think it was a client or someone. Uh, they had an air conditioning unit they had purchased on a high interest loan. Um, and they want to know if they. They, they couldn't afford to pay it. Is, is someone going to take it from them? So, I've talked about this before, and we have emails that talk about this. Uh, what is a security interest? A security interest is when someone loans money to someone, uh, they have an interest in some property that maybe was part of that loan. For example, a mortgage. When you buy a home, you've heard of a mortgage. A mortgage is a security interest. The, the lender who loaned you the money for the house, they have a security interest in, in the house that you're buying. If you fall if, if on it, they can foreclose on the home. Okay? Now, and then, or if you bought a car, and financed a car, well, what happened is the lender uh, would, they would have the title, you would have the registration, uh, but, but they have the title and there's a contract for you to make payments. And then if you default and don't make the payments, uh, the lender has the right because they technically own the car. You have permission as long as you make the payments to keep driving it. They could repossess the car. They don't have to go to the court for that. They can just do that on their own. There used to be TV shows about repossession. You may have seen it. Some guy trying to repossess a boat or a car. 
And there's, there was even repossession shows on repossessing airplanes. Okay, there's other types of security interest. Okay, um, for personal property. Now, what's personal property? That's stuff like a washing machine, a computer, anything like that. Okay, there's, there's two types of security interest on that. One is a, they call it a purchase money security interest. The other one is a non-purchase money security interest. So, if you went and bought a, a piece of jewelry at a, a jewelry store, for example, they might have what's called a purchase money security interest. In other words, when you, if you're paying on time, they have a, a lien on that jewelry until you pay for it, okay? Now, obviously, they're gonna have a hard time coming out and pulling the jewelry, the ring off your finger, but it gives them a little bit more rights, okay? And uh, a lot of companies like the sell furniture have what's called purchase money security. They say, if you don't pay it, we can take the item. I don't see that being enforced very rarely, hardly ever, okay? A couple of reasons. One reason, if you buy a piece of furniture, once you've had it, it's worthless. I mean, it doesn't, it costs them more money to hire a truck and men to go out there and try to get that. And then, then if you refuse to let them in your home, they'd have to go to the court and get a special order. So as a practical matter, it's really hard for a, a creditor that has a, what's called a purchase money security interest to, to try to actually enforce that. Um, but they do have a security interest. Now, that there's another type of security interest, and that, that the person who called about the air conditioner, they probably had what's called a purchase money security interest. So the question he had was, this person had is, if I don't pay it, are they gonna take my air conditioner? Um, I doubt it. You'd have to let them do it. They couldn't come in and just forcibly take it out of your, out of your house. I'm assuming it's an air conditioner that went into a window, big unit. Um, if it was attached to your house in some way, then no, they, it gets gets more complicated than that. They may not may not even have a security interest on it if it's attached to the property in some fashion. So, no, I mean, if you refuse them permission, and they they would probably sue you for money. But where do they go to the to get the court's assistance to pull out of your house, I doubt it. I'm not. I'm not encouraging people to, to do that kind of thing. I'm just telling you what the practical matter, practical application of it is. Now, where this is important is, some high interest lenders will loan people the money, and they'll have you put down certain items of property that you own, and say we have a security interest in your computer, with your TV, your couch, your bed, your dining room table. And that's called a non-purchase money security interest. And the reason these creditors do this, that loan money, they use it to intimidate people into thinking that, gee, if I don't pay this loan, they're gonna come and take my bed, or my couch, or my computer, or my TV, or my lawnmower. Um, they won't, they'll threaten they're gonna do it, but if they came to your property and you told them to get off your property, they'd have to go to the sheriff and go to the court and file a bunch of paper, and they, they just won't do it. It's not worth their effort. So the reason they get a security interest on your property that you already own is just to intimidate you into paying the debt. Now, if you're a senior and you're poor and you're lower income and you can't afford it, uh, you could choose to stop paying that. Are they gonna enforce that security interest on that stuff you already own? I doubt it. I mean, I, I don't see it happening. I can't recall they were happening. 30 or 40,000 bankruptcies at least. I can't remember any time ever seeing it happen. So no, it's not gonna be an issue. Uh, okay. So, a couple things here. Um, I had, one of the attorneys that helps sent me an email, I think it was yesterday, and they said, Eric, do we have a an email or something, uh, you know, on the subject, is my property protected from creditors? Uh, and, you know, I, we do, but I did one, especially uh, an article on this, and I kind of want to go over this, because kind of I think it's kind of interesting. Um, 
Yeah, your property is protected from creditors. And explain why. You know, first off, if you've got a car, uh, you know, if you have a car loan and they have the title, you know, yeah, you've got to make payments. So they could repossess the car. But let's say you have a car that's free and clear or uh, that you don't owe any money on it or you don't owe any money on it or you owe very little and it's worth a whole lot. Okay, first states have what are called exemption laws, which which say how much equity you can have in a certain type of person, property that's protected. But it, it's not the practice of creditors that get judgments to try to take a person's car. They just don't do it. It can happen, but it just it's just not their practice for a lot of different reasons. Um, and then most states have what's called a wild card exemption. So the state may have an exemption on your, on your household goods, um, tools of trade, they may, a whole list of different things. And then they may have what's called a wild card to say, well, okay, in addition to this, you have a thousand dollars that will cover any other property that's not listed. And most of the times, these exemptions are more important, I think, in bankruptcy than they are in the general world. The reason is, in bankruptcy, a trustee could come in and uh, you file bankruptcy, you got excess assets, a trustee could say, well, listen, I want to take this asset, sell it, pay you, pay you your, your exemption, and use the rest of the money to pay your creditors. But out of bankruptcy, someone would first have to have a judgment, and then they would have to execute on that property. But for them to execute or try to take that property, they have to get the assistance of a sheriff. It's, it's complicated, it's just expensive, they'd have to have an attorney, and they'd have to pay you your pay anything that's owed on the property and then they'd have to pay you your exemption and in the end they may not even get enough and so it's a real problem and they've learned by the school of hard knocks that it's not worth their while to do that so and then so that for a lot those reasons as a practical matter even if you have value property over and above the exemption in the state where you live each state have different exemptions you know, a very highly, highly unlikely you lose your property. Just, it's just not going to happen. Now, what they would do is try to garnish your bank account and see if you have any money in there, or, or, do a garnishment on your wages if you're employed. But I've already explained, and you understand why your, why your, um, your bank account is protected if you're a senior. Now, what about wages? Well, most of our clients aren't working, but if you are, uh, there's different wage exemptions. There's a federal wage exemption that's every, effective everywhere that protects 217.50 net per week from wages. But then states have di other exemptions on, on income that will, can protect more than that. Texas doesn't allow uh, a wages to be garnished. California has a high exemption. You know, the different states have higher amounts. So chances of you being garnished, you'd have to be sued, you have to be making over a certain amount of money, and we just don't see it happen with our clients, just very rare. Um, now, they'll, they'll threaten to take your property, a creditor will or a collector will. They'll say they can do that and intimidate people. So to answer the question, is my property protected from creditors? Uh, it's protected by law and then it's also protected by practical matters. Now, we're talking about, you know, lower income seniors here, people with modest means you know we're not talking about rich people that have a huge amount of assets a huge or big debts you know talking about nor, normal normal joes okay um so that that would be important for you to hear about okay I looked through some email before I started here, and someone just asked, is my Social Security and pension protected? Well, yeah. Yeah, it is. Federal law protects Social Security and pension. So that's why I say we answer the same question over and over again, but it's good to get that word out. And why is it good to get the word out? I'll tell you why. When I started HELPS, first year or so, I met with groups at senior centers and stuff, and I'd ask questions like, "How many if is your social? How, how many know that their social security is protected from creditors? Can this occur? And it, it would be amazing, you know. I get like 50 people, you know, maybe 48 or 49 out of 50 would 
never realized their Social Security was protected or their pension was protected. They didn't know. They, if they thought their Social Security was protected, they didn't know their pension was protected or they didn't know how their bank account was protected. So, yeah, if I repeat things, you know, you guys can hear this and maybe inform others about this. You know, HELPS was founded so seniors with financial problems uh, could be protected from creditors harassing them. And then it was also founded to be able to educate seniors about their financial rights. And the reason HELPS was started was because there was no one telling seniors uh, this information. Got to realize, statistically, half of seniors have incomes within 200% of the poverty line. They're lower income, okay? And they're classified as economically vulnerable. Now, who helps these seniors out there, okay? Now, there's elder law attorneys, but elder law attorneys have families, their offices, they have staff. They're supported by people that pay their fees. Now, if you're a poor senior or lower income, can you afford an attorney? Unlikely. You don't have money to pay an attorney. And so where do you turn for questions or help? Uh, or where do you get your answers? Well, the Internet's full of a lot of information, but a huge amount of it is incorrect or false or misleading. Um, and there's what's called debt management companies or debt settlement companies. In the old days, it used to be called consumer credit counseling. They used to have one in every, every city that would help people with financial problems. When the internet came around, consumer credit counseling locally went away and people, these companies started opening up on the internet. And there's, there's dozens of them. There's for-profit and non-profit. But as a rule, uh, either one of them is with few exceptions, will not tell a senior, by the way, you don't need to pay this debt. You don't need our help because all your income is protected. No one can touch your Social Security or your pension. You don't need our help. Uh, instead, they'll sign people up, making them, put them on payments, paying old debt many of them can't afford to pay, uh, and forcing them, and thereby the senior goes without their medicine or cutbacks on heat or things like that. So, that's why HELPS was so necessary to be able to get the word out to seniors about what their rights are in addition to protecting them from debt collectors because there's just a lot of inaccurate information. And then, and then of course, with the Internet now, you know, there's scammers everywhere, and they, play, and they prey on seniors. Now, they, they could scam anyone, but, you know, but I, you know, because I work with seniors, I see that seniors can be particularly vulnerable to scammers. I mean, I, they, they contact me all the time. I get my, my cell phone or I get emails from scammer. We, we see it all day long. And I talked to a client yesterday or the day before. They, we got an email from a client say, Am I, I th I'm being scammed. And so I called the person back. And she told me, well, they told me this and they told me that. And I said, listen, uh, don't, you know that was a scam. Don't talk to them. Don't. If, if once you realize a scam, hang up the phone. Don't give them a chance to get in your mind. Okay. Uh, a lot of these scams are what's called phishing scams. I may have talked about that. P h i s h i n g. It's kind of like phishing. What they want to do is they send you something to get you to call them back or get give have you give them some personal information so they can maybe get a access to your bank account or some something where they could take money from you. Um, so, you know, don't fall prey to that. Don't, you know, don't, okay? And we've got a lot of videos on YouTube that talk about different scams. We're gonna have more all the time. Okay, how does help stay in business? Do you have outside funding? No, we don't have outside funding. Uh, um, I've, we've, ex if you get on our, our webpage, www, down below here, okay? Uh, you can look at some articles that we've got detailed articles that talk about how help started. Uh, we're a 501c charity, but we don't solicit donations. At least we don't now. Uh, how are we supported? Well, okay. Four out of five seniors that enroll in helps pay a little bit of money. Uh, not very much. One out of five get our help for free. Uh, 
a, a senior, depending on their income, there's a guideline. They might pay $20 for 12 months, then $10 a month for the next 36 months. After that, $5 a month. Um, we No one has ever kicked out of our program because they can't afford us or are unable to pay. Uh, we don't turn anyone away that qualifies for the service we provide. Um, and when people, the way they join helps is they, they call us, we interview them, they might call three or four or five times, it doesn't matter, and before they decide to enroll. Uh, there's no money required up front. Uh, when, when a person enrolls, uh, they typically, you know, their payment wouldn't begin until 30, 30 days at least down the road, and uh, it's usually paid by debit card, and it'd be $20, like if someone was being paid on the third Wednesday, and they enrolled today. So third Wednesday would always be after the 22nd, right? So if we enrolled someone today, um, and today is uh, the 27th, their payment might not begin till like the 22nd of December, okay? Or it could be the 23rd or 24th of November. So, you know, 30, at least 30 days away, 30 to 60 days away, the people. But, but they're enrolled immediately. So we click a button, uh, they're part of our program, uh, they can get us the creditors, but their payment won't begin until 30 or 60 days. And it's a small amount. I, we don't hear people complaining about the fees. And if there's a problem we make, we, we can make it work for people. Um, and so it's kind of like a volume. We have a number of people, you know, thousands and thousands of people are enrolled in HELPS and more all the time. And so uh, we have to make enough money to pay our staff and, you know, and to keep the lights on and... Uh, not, not in the money, we're in it to be able to help people. And so the more people that can enroll in HELPS, the more money we can get to be able to spread the word more. Uh, because, you know, I just hear from people all, all day long, you know, well, I, I wish I had known about this sooner. And that's why we always ask people to share what HELPS does with others. And you can click like if you like what we do. Okay? Um, so that hopefully that answers that question. Oh. So I got a, a nice little email from uh, a person at a s assisted living facility or a senior center or some, I guess, maybe it was a senior, no, it was, a, it was a, where people live there. And I, guess, I think it was an assisted living facility. And it was from a, a caretaker or one of the persons in the head office. And they said, and the, they asked me a question. They said, Eric, uh, um, I don't know if they addressed it to me or not, but I can't. But they said they had a a tenant there, a client of theirs that was staying there that owed the IRS some money, okay? And $500, $550. And they, he would get letters from the IRS saying you need to pay this. And it was upsetting for him, okay? And the question is, is there anything you can do to prevent him from getting these letters? Well, okay, the email said that it was for taxes that he owed for 2012, okay? Now, it wasn't very much money, $500. And so, I'll explain, I emailed her back and said, you can share this with him, and then if he's worried, you can always call and talk to us. In fact, because of this particular case, you know, I could imagine that maybe this guy just was worried about this issue. I said, you know, you can ask for me and I'll be glad to talk with him or with you on the phone too if that's going to make him feel better. But meanwhile, let me explain this and you can share this with him. And if you want to call, you can do that. First, I said, you know, IRS has 10 years to collect taxes from the time they were assessed. So if you file, if 2012 taxes would have been filed when? Probably on April 15th by April 15th of 2023, I mean 2013, okay? And it could have been October 15th of 2013, but let's assume April 15th. October is if you have an extension. So what I said is, you're probably not gonna get another letter because by next April 15th, 10 year statute of limitations will run, the IRS isn't gonna try to collect anymore. And then the other thing I said, that's just a form letter that went out. The IRS would never do anything to try to collect $500 from from this person and they know that his income is social security and this is not going to do it okay it's too small of an amount uh so 
No, he doesn't need to worry about it. Now, how to prevent the, the letters? Well, you know, there is a technical way. If you had someone that rep, that had power of attorney, and that would be a certain accountant or an attorney or something like that, that's registered with the IRS, then that person could get the notices. But as a practical matter, that won't happen for, for him. But prime main thing is that, you know, the statute's going to run. He's not going to get these letters anymore. And the other thing is, I'm telling him that they're not going to try to collect from him. Uh, let's say it's a larger amount and there's less years involved. Okay. Well, the IRS in situations like these, the most they would ever do would be to give notice to someone that they intend to set off a certain percentage of your Social Security. Okay. Uh, and that's 15%. Uh, but they, they're not going to do that without giving you a warning. And the no, you'd, you would get a notice to say, after 60 days, we're going to start taking 15% of your Social Security. And if you make under a certain amount of money, which probably around $2,200 or $2,300 now with inflation, if you're a single person, or about thirty-one dollars or $3,200 if you're a couple, you can qualify for what's called currently not collectible status with the IRS. And it's often possible to get on that by just calling the IRS on the phone. We have a detailed email that tells exactly what you need to do and how to do that. Um, yeah, the IRS isn't going to collect from people that can't afford to pay the taxes that are, need the money for their, their food, their medicine, their utilities, their basic needs. And they have guidelines on budgets. And so this email that we get provided to people tells you what the guidelines are so you can look at them. You know, Now, if you can afford to pay it, you can pay it. Or you can contact the IRS, you can get on their website, and you can pay it over like five or six years if you want to pay it. And I'm, I'm not discouraging people from paying their taxes, but if you're going to go without basic needs, then the government wants you to be able to take care of yourself. You don't need to pay the taxes, okay? Because that's why they set up currently not collectible status. Um, and then I've also said many times before that if you owe state income taxes, and you're on Social Security or pension protected income, the state can't collect from you. They can't set off your Social Security. They can't do it. They're just like a regular credit card. They can't, uh, your bank account is protected. You know, the banks protect twice the amount of your federal benefits, even from state tax collectors. Okay? So hopefully that would work for this gentleman. And if he's still nervous about this, I made it clear that this caretaker, the person that's helping him, could have him call or he they call with him and then we could talk to him directly. Sometimes people want to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. They want to hear it from an attorney that, yeah, this is why you don't need to worry. Um, and we don't mind doing that. He probably doesn't need our help otherwise. He probably doesn't have any other creditors. So we just do that just because we're that's what we do. We want to help people. Um, But that's important to know about taxes. That comes up a fair amount of time. Okay. Um, I'd written down small claims. Okay. So when someone sues someone for money, if you'll money to someone, there's different courts where you can file a case to, to sue someone. And many, most states have a, what's called a small claims court. It's kind of like if you've seen TV shows, Judge Judy, where people have these little small quabbles, quibbles that they're arguing about. Um, and if it's under a certain amount of money, you can file a small claims court, maybe 5000 or less. And technically under small claims an attorney can't appear on a small claims case. Now, if it's a corporation that's suing someone, an attorney can represent the corporation. Uh, um, but it, small claims is designed so it's informal and that attorneys aren't, it's not, there's not the legal proceedings that you would have in a regular big court. So, you know, some people want to know is small claims any different than another court? Well, 
just in the fact that it's less formal, it's not any different. You can get sued, you can get a judgment, uh, but you can defend yourself. And uh, well, most of our clients that call us that's been sued, you know, we let them know, you know, if you don't owe the money, you can defend yourself. We, helps doesn't represent people in court. Uh, it's not what we do. Um, most of our clients, if they're sued, they owe the money. But what we do inform them is that, hey, your income's protected, your assets are safe, so you're what's called judgment-proof. What's judgment-proof means? means if someone gets a judgment, they can't collect from you. They can't take your Social Security, they can't take your income, they're not going to take your property, so you're judgment-proof, okay? Um, So, um, I'm going to talk about something else here. We work on this credit rebuilding program with, with uh, Phil Tyrone and 720. Huh. Uh, we've been working on it and we're about ready to get this email out. And I'll kind of go over what I've written on this to, to share. Uh, so, this is going to go out to our helps clients that, uh, and I'll just kind of read it. I think you find it interesting. Many, many seniors would like to rebuild their credit. They realize good credit could help them find a place to rent. Good credit can result in lower car insurance or a lower interest loan for a senior interest in purchasing a car. Many seniors with poor credit might want a new credit card. There's a lot of reasons why seniors might want to, want to reestablish their credit. Helps has joined Phil Tyrone and 720 Credit Score to offer free enrollment in, to helps clients in seven steps to a 720 Credit Score for seniors. And then Emo says, who would be interested in this program? Many helps clients are not interested in rebuilding their credit. They don't anticipate needing credit again. This program is for helps clients who, for whatever reasons, would like to rebuild their credit again. Okay, how long will it take to rebuild my credit? Uh, following this program to rebuild your credit up to uh, a 720 credit score between 12 to 24 months. Okay, now, will late payments or lawsuits and judgments prevent me from rebuilding my credit? No. Uh, Phil, Ty Phil, as in Phil Tyrone, who whose program this is, and, and it's, all, it's free for our clients, will explain how credit is rebuilt around late payments and how lawsuits and judgments are not reported on credit reports. So you can rebuild your credit even if you still owe debt you are not paying. And how does that work? The way the credit reporting works is that they look at your recent history and your old history the older it gets, the less impactful it is. And if you you can if you build new credit, they look at that and your credit score goes up. Even if you've got old debt that you haven't paid, that old paid that old debt will not continue to drag you down. Even if it's not paid, you don't have to bankrupt on it. Okay. Um, so how does the program work? Uh, the program has five videos covering seven steps uh, a senior can take to rebuild their credit. These videos clearly and concisely explain what you need to do to rebuild your credit. Uh, what if I have questions in the program? So if you decide to enroll in this program and we're, we're going to send an email to all of our clients that are that have been with helps for at least like, like three months or four months, they can enroll at that point. Okay. Uh, so they're in the program and they listen to these videos from Phil and they give clear instructions what to do. What if they have a question about this, that, or the other thing? 720 Credit Score has a live question and answer session each month where you can get your questions answered, helps us on answer questions on rebuilding credit itself. So, in fact, if you get on their website, these old videos, will you can see them where people, these other sessions where people have asked questions. So. Um, you get a chance. You get a chance to ask questions about your peculiar situation, if you need to. But I've listened to all the videos. I've followed it. It's a legitimate program. It really works. 
Um, it's great. So how can I begin? You can, you can enroll in 720 credit score for seniors free after you've been a member of HELPS for a minimum of three months. There you go. HELPS will email you a link to the form to enroll in the program at no charge. You'll be part of the credit rebuilding program as long as you're a member of HELPS. And now these videos, you can do them as fast or slow as you want. But uh, we decided a few years ago, or you know, I don't know, almost six to eight months ago, a lot of our clients really wanted to rebuild their credit. Before I thought it, it really wasn't really practical, but when I talked to Phil and I've known him for a long time, he convinced me that it is practical and can happen. So I said, well, why not? This is gonna be great for seniors who wanna rebuild their credit. And some of our clients, you know, a lot of our clients are really poor. They have very little incomes. Uh, and some might say, well, you know, you can rebuild your credit if you want, but probably no one's going to be willing to loan you any money anyway because you need all your money for your basic needs. Well, sometimes they just want to anyway. But then some of our clients might have a, a higher Social Security they get, husband and wife together maybe, and maybe they got a, a more significant pension. And so I can see where I... You know, some seniors might want to rebuild their credit. And so we're going to make that available for people. It's not going to be overnight. And the thing about rebuilding credit, <laughs> there's some scammers that engage in this type of business, okay, uh, on rebuilding credit. and charge a lot of money. And uh, they never talk to people about the pros and cons of rebuilding credit and when they really need to and when they don't. Phil's program is legitimate, which means he doesn't take any shortcuts. He tells people exactly what you need to what you need to do, and so that's why I like it, and that's why I think it'll work for our clients. Instead of having, it's not there's not any tricks, not any quick 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 process because the quick process don't really don't work <laughs> for a lot of reasons, and Phil will probably explain why they don't work. Anyway. So that's the credit rebuilding program. Um, and I don't know if I've got any other questions to come up today on this. You know, all week long I get emails or I, and I keep, I try to write down things I need to talk about and sometimes I, I get so busy talking one client after another that I say, I need to write this down and I forget to write it down. So I, I need to get better at that. Organization has never been my forte, but I've got wonderful staff that work with me that can help keep us organized. Um, I guess May next week we'll talk about student loans. If you owe a student loan, you know, there's this, you can get on the, I don't know if I talked about it last week or not, but, I did a bells and whistles, or I did a email, a mass email on this just recently that we can send to people that that want it. You can get on the internet, Google student loan forgiveness, and get it. There's a government website where you can fill out a form. I think I, did, I mentioned that. I'll mention it again. Uh, and you, you, if you owe a student loan between ten or twenty thousand dollars, depending, you can fill out this form, and it's pretty simple, and looks like. They're going to let you forgive 10000 of your student loan. Now, I'll finish up by this. I talked to someone, could have been yesterday. One of the paralegals got me on the phone. said, this lady has $80,000 in student loans. She's really, really worried about it. Well, I looked at the file. Um, when people call in helps, we have a really sophisticated computer program where we, we ask people questions about their income, you know, their phone number, state they live, their ages. We have some basic information. It's all confidential, nothing nosy. And the reason we have to ask that is to know how to help someone. So I saw right away that uh, her only income was like, she said $600 in Social Security. And then she got a $700 pension. She had eight, over 80000 in student loans. And she's been talking to the student loan people about they wanted her to sign, fill out some form to paperwork and all this stuff 
She had to get to join the student loans together and blah, blah, blah. And so I told my, the, my intake person, I said, join me on the call. And I talked to her and I said, you only get this amount in Social Security? She says, that's right. Uh, you don't need to do anything. And she, she kind of didn't want to hear that. And I explained to her. I said, you know, the only if you're behind on your student loan, the only thing they can do is set off 15% of your Social Security. But right now, under the current law, $750 is protected. You don't even make that in Social Security. And there's a stay in effect that prevents them from offsetting Social Security right now. It helps us in a, we're the plaintiff in a lawsuit that sued the government, got that stopped, and it's still stopped. And I said, but if it wasn't stopped, you don't make enough money in Social Security for them to be able to take anything out. You don't need to do all this work. You don't need to worry about this. They'll, you'll never have to pay that student loan. They're never going to take any money. for. They're not going to touch your pension. They don't do that. Uh, and um, and after we were done, I, I wrote her a, a detailed e email and had links to the uh, law that explained how her Social Security was protected, how they couldn't take if you had 750 or less, they can't garnish to offset any of your Social Security and explain, you know, you know, I mean, you don't need to go through that. You're never going to be able to pay it anyway. You don't need to worry about it. OK. And she really didn't have any other debt. Um, so. Um, so that's it. You know, there's usually an answer and we got a video on it, a video on that. It's called. You have an answer for everything, something like that. And, and I don't want to brag and say that we do. There's always different situations, but uh, but we do have an answer for most of the seniors' problems financially with creditors and what they can and cannot do, or we'll be able to give them the right direction. And why do we have that? Well, because we, the attorneys that helps, we've been dealing with these issues for decades, and so we know what the law is and we know what the real world is and a lot of times uh, there's a big difference between the law and the real world and the real world is what really important to know and the law is important to mo know too so um, but if you have a small amount of student loan debt get on that website 10,000 or 20,000 you can get it get it forgiven you won't have to worry about it anymore but if you had more than that uh, you can get on what's called an income-based repayment plan, pay zero dollars per month. Um, and we help people do that or we give them directions on how to do that. So student loans aren't going to be an issue. Okay, so I think I'm done. A little bit shorter today. Um, eight, um, please, I don't think I've ever said that, please like us if you like this video and subscribe to us. And we'd like you to share what we do with others and uh, let people know that this video is available and they can call in and ask their questions uh, and uh, we should we should have the answer or be able to find the answer for people and i want everyone to have a great day